Let's start off by introducing yourself. Who is Chris Chang? Oh, um, I'm Chris Chang. I'm 34 years old. Uh, I was born in Nashville at, I think, what was in Baptist Hospital. I grew up not far from Cane Ridge Park. Um, my mom and dad, my mom's from Woodbine, she grew up off of J Street, and my dad is an immigrant from Hong Kong. He moved here in 1972 um, to go to Belmont University in Nashville. That was his, that was the American dream for him when uh, he was growing up in Hong Kong. He had a woman, someone at his mom's church um, had been to Belmont for an event and um, and so that was him, that was it. So when he grew up, he wanted to be, fulfill his American dream and he came to Belmont University. and. Um, so I have a brother and a sister as well. And I just love, I love Nashville. Um, my wife and I are, are hot sauce makers. We work at the farmer's markets. We have a funny background. Um, Chelsea used to be a NICU nurse at Vanderbilt. And then in my 20s, I was an army officer. Uh, I served in our regular army. I also served as an army ranger officer. Um, I was stationed in Colorado and Georgia and did some deployments in Kuwait and Afghanistan. Um, but we moved back home. We fell in love with farmer's markets and we moved back home and, and I really, really wanted to start. We, we really wanted to do something in the farmer's market community. And so so that's our life. We make hot sauce at the old Hunter's Automotive, which is another mm -hmm. garage conversion like this facility. And we sell it at the local markets around town. So um, on tomorrow, we'll be at the Richland Park Farmers Market from nine to 12. And then um, we've done markets all over town from Creve Hall to Donaldson to 12 South, East Nashville. Um, that's how we spend our days. And we work with local businesses and farms and and, um, and mom and pop stores and gift shops across town. That's, uh, that's what we do for a living. If you were going to write the job description for at-large counsel, what do you think the job entails? Oh, yeah. For me, one of the, one of the big reasons I want to run for at-large in, in the job description is as someone who kind of has a really holistic perspective of the county and someone who's really invested in not just one neighborhood, but all the different neighborhoods and communities. And there's a couple of reasons why I was drawn to that position in particular. Um, one is... Um, we, we live in Old Hickory now, but we grew up um, south of town. Um, Chelsea grew up off Smith Springs Road in Antioch, and I was further south. And we, we work, again, all, all over the county with different businesses of all different types. And I think you want to have someone who's really like kind of policy driven and someone who has like a passion for things that, um, that are important across the county. And so for me, one of my biggest things, in addition to small businesses, is community infrastructure. That is something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, and what I mean by that is um, our parks, our greenways, our schools, our libraries, um, our community centers, the recreational facilities. These are the places that I'm so thankful that we have, um, that we have. And I'm also really just, I loved those growing up. So when we were t started dating as teenagers, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, we make hot sauce for a living, so we still don't have a lot of money, but we would go to the parks like Cane Ridge Park and play tennis. Um, I remember going up there and play, going to picnics and, and softball and playing kickball. And for me, it, it didn't matter how much money you make or your socioeconomic background or your age. It was a place where people can come together and have fun and, and meet each other. I think you're bumping up against different neighbors, bumping up against um, people you don't know, and kind of having these informal relationships and bonds that people build. Um, same with our libraries, especially in our schools and these resources. These are kind of, to me, like the great equalizers in our society. So with natural growing, with, with um, affordability um, uh, um, problems, it's so important to me that we invest in these places that can, that can benefit everyone and give everyone an opportunity to not just survive, but thrive. Um, even something as simple, like our libraries, like I really talk about our libraries a lot and, it, and it's like, oh, our libraries like, are so important um, to me and I think our communities. Um, again, my dad being an immigrant, like for our immigrant community, they offer English as equal language resources, um, citizenship courses, um, workforce opportunities, so you can learn about those things. They even have like the seed library, like we, we've used the seeds this year to try to grow tomatoes and, and, and different other vegetables. And I think it's something where you can always learn and have these resources. Um, they're so, these are, again, hubs for me that are just deeply important to all parts of our community. And going back to the question, for the at-large, you know, I'd love someone to be con constantly there. So if I was able to get elected and be one of our five at-large members, I'd want to be someone when there's a new development, no matter where Potter County there is, or a new policy, I'd be out there at the table and being like, hey, can, how can we, you know, how can we advocate for our small businesses in this situation? Is there a way that our local coffee shop or bagel shop um, or farmer's market here can really thrive and create some spaces for them? So is there some green space we can continue to protect and to, and to have like where we can have craft festivals or community celebrations? Um, these are so much as, as I think the at-large person, uh, the, the way I would try to run the job is to be that person who's a resource for uh, our community assets across the county. Of the four candidates in the runoff who got the FOP uh, endorsement, you're the only one that hasn't served on council before. What, why do you think uh, they chose you? Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't think about the who's, 
uh, for me, I mean, I served, our, I served in our military. I think that was something, I walked into the door, I'm not sure if they had any idea who I was, or, and, and I walked in and I was like, hey, you know, and, and, I, and I've never been a police officer, and I've never, and for me, I, I told them that, I was honest, like, hey, I've, I've never been a police officer, um, but thank you for what you do, to, you know, to, to protect, protect our communities, and, um, but I have served in uniform before, and I know the challenges of that, and I also know the, I remember what it was like to be held accountable as a young army officer, um, not just by my senior ranks, but you also had to, you had to answer to, you know, your soldiers and your non-commissioned officers. And I think being 22 years old and being an army officer is a, is a weird job. Like you come in and it's an awkward position where uh, you're in charge of folks who are, you know, twice my age, um, much smarter than me, much more experienced, um, more like physically fit. And so what is your role? And for me, you can take it a couple different directions. You can say, hey, I, this is my rank and this is, you know, here's for, for me to listen. Or the role I took was just, hey, I'm just, I need to learn from you. And then our number one job is to take care of our, our people and our soldiers. And I told them that those were my experiences and, uh, and I, I'm willing to listen. And, and particularly for me, growing up as a son of an immigrant um, south of town and, and like I kind of want, I want to play a unique role in that position where I, I have served in uniform before, but also want to represent for our communities and say, hey, like I, I'd like to be, a, my ambition here is to, to be a bridge between um, th these groups and, and to be almost like a facilitator of like, hey, this is how our community's feeling. Like I'm involved, I want to communicate, you know, any of their concerns or, or ideas they have um, for, for like policing and our first responders. And also do the same thing for our police. Like, hey, here's the challenges our police force is having, whether it be staffing, um, whether it be, you know, hours where they can do overtime on, on different parts of town. And, and also like, there's a one really specific issue that I wasn't aware of coming in, I've been able to learn so much in this process, is vehicle maintenance. So much of our police force is like, hey, we, even with lower staff, we can't be there if our vehicles can't get us there. And I was like, oh, one of my first jobs, one of my early jobs in the Army was in charge of our maintenance for our, our unit as a young officer. And so I definitely appreciated some of these some of these like logistical challenges, I think that you don't often hear about on the headline news. And, um, but again, I, I wanna be, my ambition there is to, to provide, provide value. Um, at the end of the day, I think being a member of not just the five at large members, but the council as a whole, a lot of people have different strengths and, and, and different abilities and experiences. And I think I can offer, you know, as being a, a previous um, service member, um, but also growing up here and being part of the community, I can offer like, hey, this is, these are the perspectives I can bring to the table. And I'd like to, I'd like to play a role in that. I know our council is nonpartisan, but as a newcomer, where would you place yourself in the world of progressive, conservative? Where are you? Oh, this is a phenomenal question. Um, so I came in, uh, I was like, again, coming through as an outsider, I was like, oh, it's a nonpartisan election. Um, you know, and, and there's certain bad things about that, wastewater management, potholes, um, sidewalks, parks. And I was been, I've been relentlessly focused on these issues. I mean, I consider myself, I, I, my dad uh, grew up, my dad being an immigrant, my mom from here, I grew up in a democratic family. Um, those are those are the values that I, I was around growing up and those and those are the values that like I, I'm always rooting for the underdog I'm always rooting for the working class and that's something that um, is near and dear to my heart um, but at the same time like I grew up I went to you know I served in the army I went to school uh, in college in California and then I also went to grad school in Boston I studied at the Harvard's Business School and the School of Public Policy. Um, the Public Policy School is one of the, I mean, they have people from all over who've graduated there, but it's a, traditionally a very, very progressive, you know, institution that, you know, tries to give equal opportunity for thought. And so I've had a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different insights. And so I think one thing I'm willing to do is always is to listen. And I think a lot of times my father was a federal mediator. He retired as a federal mediator. And he taught us like, there's always value in different perspectives. And I think there is a good, I'm excited that the, that the council does have different perspectives. And there are, there are progressives, there are, there are like business friendly folks, there are people who are looking at the first responders. And for me, I really, 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 like when I was an army officer, we had people, I think, I think the army gets a, um, you know, a reputation as being quite homogenous, um, both in look and in thought. And in my experience at least was completely different. You know, we had soldiers of all different rages, uh, rages uh, races, ages, religions, um, gender identifications, political identifications. And one thing you had to do was come together for a common purpose and a common mission. And I think that was a role, um, a, a really good experience for me. And the day was just taking care of the people. I thought as being an army ranger, you just like jump out of airplanes a lot and, and, and do things like that, which, which I did, but really it was just taking care of your people, make sure they got home safe. And even when we were home safe, 
little things like making sure they went to the dentist, making sure they made sure they you know took care of their families, had off time for their mental health, and and that's um and for me with a, a broad spe spectrum of um, ideologies, like I think I'd love to continue to push the envelope for us to find common ground, fight where we need to fight, um, but find common ground where hey we really 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 need to preserve, for example, our green spaces. You know Nashville's growing. You know, this is important to all of us to live a healthy place, make sure our stormwater management, if there's natural disasters, we're prepared for that. Um, you know, a place where we keep our utilities on and uh, with, with the different storms this winter, with the utility, utilities going off, it's like, I'm so thankful that, you know, we live up in Old Hickory and, you know, it wasn't like this everywhere, um, but NES was out there. So a lot of people are like, focus on our public employees and these service members, we have to make sure that they can afford to live here, but also have the resources to, to maintain the core services of the city. And so th that's what I'm mostly focused on um, primarily.